Hi, uh, today we'll be uh, seeing about <coughs> the third point. So in the last video lecture, I have discussed about uh, uh, the effect of lens line induction motor working principle or uh, how a lens law is uh, being satisfied in induction motor uh, working. And uh, the second point what I have discussed is about uh, uh, what happens if induction motor uh, runs at uh, synchronous speed. And third point what I'm going to discuss now is about why induction motor cannot run at synchronous speed. I repeat, the first point is lens law. Lens law is about why, a sync, why uh, the rotor uh, runs uh, along with the speed, along with the direction of the RMF. That's the first point what I have explained. I gave uh, enough explanation on that. And then the second point is that why, uh, uh, why uh, uh, what happens if uh, rotor runs at the speed of the synchronous speed. That's the second point what I have discussed. And the third point what I'm going to make now is about why it cannot run at synchronous speed. Okay why it cannot run at synchronous speed why induction motor cannot make to achieve or to catch the speed of rmf you know it always slips behind rmf why what's the reason let's come to the discussion now basically the power equation what you have for any uh, motor is power is equals to 2 pi nt uh, by 60 if you are taking for second and now see uh, 2 is a constant, k is a constant and then 60 is anyways a numerical number and now see uh, yeah power is now proportional to speed and torque okay speed and torque let's say the speed is now proportional to power by torque if you take a constant load application torque will also be constant now let's say now for a constant load application speed is proportional to the power very good so let's say how many speeds are there for us two speeds ns and nr so what uh, what is the power behind ns and what is the power behind nr see uh, if i have to discuss about this then i will take the power input to the motor let's say i i take it as P1. This is not only the power input to the motor, I can call this as the power input to the state of winding itself, right? So, and this state of winding power input is a reason for the state of flux speed. Are you with me? This state of winding input power is a reason for state of flux speed. So, I can take from, uh, from that, from this understanding that, uh, uh, that the speed NS is proportional to, that the speed NS is proportional to is proportional to p1 okay what is that p1 input to the state of winding what is ns the state of winding flux speed that's okay now what about the power input i mean what about the power input to the rotor it is p2 it is p2 and this power is the reason for nr so what i can take now nr is proportional to p2 nr is proportional to p so that's okay now what is then next what is then uh, p which is which is uh, higher uh, uh, value which is uh, uh, p1 or p2 which is the higher value obviously p1 you know why because in the air gap you'll have a certain amount of power lost in the air gap so that is pag you know while crossing the air gap some amount of flux will get leaked and because of this leakage flux you will have some loss in the air gap and that is PAG and then uh, P2 is considered P1 minus PAG so P2 will be always less than P1 so what I can take from these two P1 is a higher value P2 is a lower value so NS will be always higher than nr very simple so rotor hasn't got any possibility to catch the speed of the stator rotor will always run at a lesser speed than stator so late rotor is always at a slower pace than the stator flux okay so this is how you can understand it is because of the power loss that happens in the rotor in the air gap okay this is how you can say why uh, why it cannot catch this is the reason poor rotor it can never catch but if you want you can make it you can make it run at ns and there is no use of making it running at ns you know because it gets 
uh, it gets uh, into uh, it stops because when and the nr is equals to ns then there will not be any uh, movement at all it stops and uh, and because of nr i mean the rotor cannot catch the speed of the stator stator flux so we would say this in a different way rotor always slips behind the stator what is that rotor always slips behind the stator and that's the point where you can introduce uh, a new term called slip which is uh, ns minus nr divided by ns what is that slip percentage of slip i can take as nr so the reason why you got slip is the rotor always slips behind the stator if rotor catches the speed of the stator there is no point of discussing or introducing a new term called slip very simple so that's why in synchronous motor there is no there are no two speeds only one speed rotor always run at the speed of synchronous speed uh, so there is no there is no point of having any slip so slip is not considered in the case of synchronous motor no slip at all in synchronous motor this is how it is right so and this is the only motor where you find two speeds ns and nr in the case of dc motor series motor shunt motor any motor whatever you take in dc only one speed if you take uh, synchronous motors only one speed this is the only motor where where you have a concept of slip slipping rotor slips behind the stator and rotor uh, 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 tries to catch the speed of the stator flux in that you can define a, a term called slip and this will affect the emf induced in the rotor this slip will affect the current induced in the rotor this slip will affect the frequency of the rotor uh, uh, and, uh, and this slip also affects the torque that is produced in the rotor. So uh, even you can observe this uh, variation when you have uh, 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 when, when you can see my lecture on speed torque characteristics that how torque and speed characteristics are being governed by the slip variations. This is how it is my dear. I hope you understand this. The first point lens law effect of lens law. Second point what happens if uh, a rotor catches the speed of the uh, stator flux and third point which i have explained in this video about uh, about why it cannot catch the why the rotor cannot catch the speed of uh, the rmfr speed ns right this is how it is have a nice time see you in the next video